Hello everybody, welcome to today's My Aim show and as you can see we are in fact talking about newsletters which is it the early 2000s Mike have we time traveled what's going on? Well we haven't time traveled um, they're very of the moment they've got zeitgeist the comeback kid you know it's all happening for newsletters really and I'm really excited about being able to share what's happening with you because the newsletters have always been very cool things to have, to have and to run. They kind of fell out of favour, but they're back. They're back. They are back indeed. Now, we've got uh, some names today. Uh, you're very excited, aren't you, Buzz? You're, you're living your best dream right now. Yes, I am. Never mind about me. What about you? Sluggish, Kirsty. I'm a little bit sluggish. I had my uh, booster job yesterday. I'm a bit, a bit delicate today. That's why I'm wearing Big Fluffy. Mm, big fluffy snuggling there's a chance you might doze off later or that might just, just if you see me just going oh, off the okay. page but you're the opposite from me today mike oh man yeah and i haven't been eat, eating uh, sugar or consuming caffeine. caffeine we ran our first in-person event on tuesday for two years we did a gig in a uh, master class in birmingham and it was outstanding i had forgotten how much fun they are and how energizing they are and I'm getting texts on the way home from various people who have been in it. One lady very kindly said that it's the best money she's invested in her business ever. And that it's changed everything. Let's bring it on. We're hoping she puts that on video, aren't we, Kirsty? <laughs> yeah, we are. We're going to try our hardest. If she, for it, if she yeah. does, you'll be seeing that one fairly soon. Anyway, yeah. enough of me. Enough of Buzz. Sluggo. Can I call you that today? Uh, you can try. I don't know if I'll respond. Okay, mm. so um, yeah, so we're, let me just bring that up because I think that's where we are, isn't it? Really, mm -hmm. um, the rising BD tool of twenty twenty two. Yes, they are. I think. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, <clears throat> we know that newsletters used to be a huge thing. Noughties, kind of early tens, maybe. In fact, you yourself ran a newsletter. It was called the Bracer, if my memory serves me right. It was. I did run the Bracer, and I have to say. It, did me proud. I really enjoyed producing it every month. It did a lot of great things for me, which we're going to discuss in a minute that you get from newsletters. It's dead easy to produce, well, free to produce, actually, and except for time. And it just worked for me. It just was brilliant. Just a great which time. Which lends itself to the sort of obvious question, really, which is if it's so fantastic and did so much for you, why did you stop using and why did they fall out of favour? Okay, two reasons, really. The first one uh, has to be this. Okay. They ruin it for everybody. Spammers. So so emails were piling into your inbox. And so they said, well, we have to sort this out. So they really strengthened the spam checkers and the junk checkers and all the rest of it. So emails were increasingly ending up in a place where you didn't want them to be. Um, and I think added to that, the second thing, which kind of happened at the same time as well, was social media mm. is that well, why do I need to, to worry about doing all these fancy kind of formatting in a newsletter and everything? I just post on LinkedIn or something. So I think those two things added together kind of sounded the the death knell, except for my accountant who still has the same format newsletter now <laughs> that they've ever had. And it, I told them at the time that's rubbish, but they still do it. It's black but and white. But you know what, it. though, like we discussed. They're now at the top of the <laughs> effectiveness now because it's come back round. And so it's different to the way it was now, though. It's different. It's not the same. It's not the same. Okay. All right. So I think we've sort of accepted that they're back. And I think most people have heard about things and, and LinkedIn have got a function now, which I think is going to help with can that. Can I tell you why they're coming into. back as well? Can can I just tell you why? Would you, you mind? Right. They're coming back because the opposite has happened. Social media is full of noise. Mm. It's full of it. It's everywhere. And so your stuff's really not getting through. And also, you don't really know who's engaging with it necessarily. You certainly don't know who's looking at it. You don't know that. You might know if they've clicked on it, liked it, or commented, of course. Um, and so the idea that you can have a subset of all of these people that you know that have said, yeah, I'd like to receive your stuff, actually. And so they receive it, and you know if they've opened it. You know if they've read it. You know if they've clicked through on something. All of that is really cool now. And I think there's been a shift because of that. That's why it's happened, just in case you're interested. Okay, so we sort of understand why now. Let's let's talk about why I should care. Because although, you know, with a lot of people, they'll have social media, they'll have day jobs. Why should I care about a newsletter? What is the advantage to me okay. as somebody in business? That's a very good, if not harsh question. So 
I'm grumpy today. What can I do? I'm grumpy. Yeah, so I'm quite sluggo. Um, at first, can I just ask if there's anybody who's tuning in who either receives a regular email? That would be awesome if you could share that what that was. Or perhaps run, has run or does run a newsletter of their own. You can pop that in the comments. That would be awesome. Okay, maybe you're okay so the watching. first reason is that research tells us that if you want to create strong relationships, business relationships, or maintain relationships, you need 26 um, relationship-driven interactions. In other words, non-work-related interactions or not directly work-related. So if you're talking to someone ongoing because of a piece of work you're doing, that doesn't count. That's one of your 26. A newsletter does. So there is 12 of your 26 interactions right there. You press the button and out it goes. It's fantastic. Um, and I think that's a really a really key part of any contact regime. We have talked for years of having a three-tier contact regime. Tier one are scheduled. In fact, we did it on the show, didn't we? I think we, we did ago. a couple of months ago. Um, tier one is scheduled interactions, telephone calls and the like. Schedule two are ad hoc, which, of course, is um, social media. And level three uh, is some kind of subscription. Well, that's a newsletter. So it's a really cool way to to get yourself out there um, once a month, get yourself in front of somebody. Now, because of that, we've talked about this before as well, the mere exposure effect. I'm not going to dwell upon that now. If you're interested, you can Google it. I think there's a big piece on Wikipedia. The big deal with the mere effect is the more you see something or somebody, the more likely you are to become familiar with them and the more likely you are to engage with them. Mm -hmm. So if you have <coughs> um, a, um, uh, what was that you sluggish? Have you got, it was know? me sluggish. No, but like LinkedIn lives for us have an element of the mere exposure effect because people yeah, see our faces, they see us a lot. They, they form a relationship with us consistently and, and newsletters are another way to do that. They are, yeah. And so do good quality posts. You know, if you make uh -huh. a good quality post on LinkedIn, it has the same effect, creates that mere effect. So, but it's just a sh schedule thing. It just happens every month. Out it goes and appears in someone's inbox. And even if they don't actually open it and read it, which you want them to, maybe they're busy that month, there's still a very good chance that they'll um, see it and associate that with you. So it's a very strong thing on the mere effect. The other thing is a big thing is timing. You know, we all of us want to hit our clients or potential clients just as they're entering into the pre-buying zone so they're not yet engaging with um potential clients um sorry potential suppliers what they are doing is actually thinking yeah i need to buy something just as your email arrives in their inbox hmm. it's like yeah and that's happened to me i did some work once with a billion dollar a recruitment agency, one of the very big ones, because I knew the CEO for various reasons. And for some reason, he used to take the bracer. I'll talk about the format in a minute. He liked it. He took it. I get an email back from him saying, you better come and see me because that thing you put in the bracer, I want to talk about that. It wasn't I didn't sell through. I mean, you can sell through newsletters, but I didn't. It was just a piece. In fact, it was a piece on social media, would you believe? Um, back in the day. I know, back in the day. So, so it's just timing that it happens to drop in at just at a time where somebody wants to talk about what you do or what you've said. And I reckon I would have picked, and this is anecdotal because I've got no data with me, but just thinking back, I would have picked up some business, probably every third newsletter, I would think, direct business. So someone's emailing me saying, oh, yeah, can you do this, Michael? Would you want to talk about that? So timing is everything, as we know. Yeah, fantastic. Um, uh, I think this, this one's is a good one. really cool feedback. You know, we're all interested in, what's interesting our stakeholders that's like a big deal isn't it you know that's what we want and we, we ask them we do polls on linkedin and rather ironically that the polls that we actually want people to fill, fill in is not the ones that people do fill in they fill in the how much sleep do you get a night poll which is pointless but like a thousands of people see it but this is one really cool way because if you build your newsletter in the right way with trackable links in them then you can see the person that clicked through mm -hmm. and how many people click through. So you can see how popular a particular subject is, which might then cause you to write an article or run a webinar or something like that on it. Very cool. Yeah. So, I think there's a, a lot going on there. We also had some comments. So Jean-Claude 
runs two newsletters. He is excelling. He's an overachiever. I think you'll find there, but I think that's fairly common breaking out. If you've got two separate client markets, like you do with a candidate and for clients yeah. running two would is a good idea. That, that's the other good thing about them, which we didn't put in earlier. And Jean-Claude is obviously Jean-Claude. If you just want to put links to those newsletters in the comments, people might be interested to, to look at those. Um, but the fact that you can actually with social media, you kind of just post it and everyone sees it unless you're going to use the, what are those things that sit under the, um, uh, company pages. I can't remember what they're called. A little group. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but my yeah, brain's anyway. asleep. But, uh... so you can post into there, but you as a person put your stuff out and everyone sees it. Whereas with a newsletter, you can have a newsletter for this group of people, a newsletter for that group of people. Very cool. Mm, yeah. We have also had this comment. So today is live. We were supposed to be doing a recording. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah Gavin, yeah, we yeah. were supposed to be doing a recording, but today is live because we got we COVID off, it. didn't we? We did get COVID off. We did get COVID off. We as did, Nikki yeah. says. We are here. It's live. Okay. It's so, live Mike, session. so we, we've sort of looked at what newsletters sort of are and they come back. We've talked about the benefits, but I think a lot of people watching this thinking about running their own is a lot of the problem when it comes to these kind of things is what the heck do I put in it? What's the content? What am I supposed to make it about? Okay. Because it's sort of starting with a blank page, which is always scary. Can you okay. help, Michael? Okay. Um, t two things, really. First of all, you kind of need to have a clear idea who you're targeting at your, your newsletter at. So Jean-Claude obviously has decided that he's got two streams of things that he wants to send out. There's no, there's not much commonality else. You just have one newsletter. He needs two, right? So you've got to realize, okay, this group of people, what are they going to want? That's the first thing. And you can get that by talking to your clients or potential clients and seeing what else is out there, what, what other newsletters are available. You can subscribe to them and see what they're saying. You actually get that. But the other thing is you've got to think about the format. And there's essentially two different types of formats. Um, <clears throat> there's the feature, which is now that LinkedIn have got a newsletter, that's what they're expecting people to do, is to write an article, really. And then that article is sent out to anybody that says that they want it. Okay, so... That's fair enough. And there's some strength. There is some benefits in that. But what I ran with the bracer and pretty much everybody else did was a thing called a smorgasbord format. Um, it's also called a blog roll is the, the, the term for it, really, where you know, so, the, yeah, the email comes in and it's got little sections. And the best ones have got the same sections in the same place every single episode or edition of your newsletter. Now, I'll tell you a way you can actually f see this for yourselves in action. If you go out at the, the weekend and buy one of these Sunday supplements, now, please don't shoot me down in flames. I've said this before. I don't take the mail on Sunday myself. Mrs. Ames occasionally does, but I don't. But if you buy the mail on Sunday, grit your teeth and get it and look at the U magazine. It's a very, very good example of what a smorgasbord looks like. Feature three. Page three is this feature, page seven is that feature, and page eight is this feature, and the back page is another feature. And you kind of get used to what you're going to get, and that's a really important part of newsletters. People begin to understand, oh, I'm going to get this, that, or the other in it. Mm. And you turn up and you get it, and that's what you want. You feed the need. People will have specific favourite sections. Like the favourite section of the bracer was one that we sort of were a little bit surprised by. It was a bit that everybody talked about was your reflections, right, was the section that you talked yeah. about. Your Rather weirdly, stuff. yeah. I wasn't doing recruitment in those days. I wasn't doing sales. I did business um, business consultancy, really, for in the corporate world. So um, I used to do a little reflection section right at the end, Mike's Reflections. And it's the one that got the most comments and the most uh, – there's no click. There's nowhere to click on it. It was just there. But it was the one that got the most attraction. And it was weird, really, because, I mean, I haven't got anything special to say, really. But it was very personal is what it was. Mm. Um, and and I think that that I used to open up a little bit, not in a weird way, like people do on social media. Or <laughs> My like mom didn't love me, that kind of thing. No, no, I th no. I think I did put that one in actually. Yeah. That's true though, nanny. No, no, yeah. but 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 ultimately, you you know when when you begin to write, you've actually got to not think about I want to get clicks or I want to get some kind of attention. It's from the inside out. What do I want to say? What what is it that I want to share with people? Yeah. because that's got authenticity then and that that's when you get a real liking and our, 
open rates in those days were very high, well above 30%, which is really high. It doesn't sound very much, but it is. And of course, they're different people every month. So it's not the same 30% because you can monitor it. Um, so, and I think it was because they knew what they were going to get. And I gave them what they wanted, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. So sort of very briefly, I know what people are going to be talking about. And you're saying that 30% is that, okay, I'm writing something. And at the moment, it's still, you know, newsletters are almost fresh again. They're almost new again. So if you fill this space, you're at the sort of front end of the wave. But how are you supposed to get people interested in what you do? How are you supposed to get subscribers, essentially, is what I'm asking. Um, well, there's two ways. Uh, let me just bring this up. So we've got subscribers, obviously, mm. um, for LinkedIn and for email linkedin is a relatively new thing it's not been out very long and not everybody's get it got it but i think most people are getting it now so that you can build a newsletter and what linkedin does because i did it this morning right? what linkedin does is you you set it all up and then linkedin tells everybody you're connected to that there's this thing and you, you do you want to subscribe to it right it's so handy that isn't it i, I wonder it, if anybody watching this got an alert of your uh Newsletter, please do let us know if you did. Yeah, tell us. Tell us if you've got it. Let me show you. Let me just show you this. Um, uh, what am I doing now? Do you want me to bring up LinkedIn? Yes, please. I, actually, no, I can do it, actually. I, oh, there you go. So, there you Oh, go. there it is, yeah. Mm. That is awesome, isn't it, really? Um, I'll tell you what. We'll make it full screen, actually. Make it a bit bigger. Mm. So I did this this morning um, about an hour and a half ago, was it, Kirsten? Yeah. Asking? And I've already got, well, it was 242 when we came in. Um, since we've been talking, I've added an extra 15 subscribers to it. And by the time the show finishes, that will have gone up again. So, I mean, 257 subscribers doesn't sound very much. But what you've got to remember is they've opted in. Those guys and, and gals have said, yeah, all right, then I'm interested in, at a headline level, I'm interested in that. I will lose some. When they realise what I'm producing isn't what they thought it was, which is fair enough, you know. Um, but but that is a pretty cool way to actually put stuff out. So I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to use the smorgs board. Um, oh, there you go, a few there. Oh, yeah, the couple I of people decided did. whether I'm going to do the smorgs board um, or um, the the article on that. I might do the article on that. But we've been talking about doing the bracer again for years, haven't we? Because it's just yeah. such a thing. So haven't quite got around to it. So this has kick-started me in it. So we might do an email version, which is a smorgasbord. We haven't decided yet. But I'm going to start work on this one and see how we do. Probably have okay. to keep it and reach out. But, yeah, but the point is you asked about subscribers. So if you go on the LinkedIn route, then either I can just share this. So I could just say to someone, here's the link. Why don't you just check out my newsletter? So if I connect with a new person on LinkedIn, I might say, oh, by the way, I do run a newsletter. Don't know whether you're interested. Have a look, see if it's for you, and register. So... You're taking people you've connected with that sometimes can lie dormant and actually you're bringing them into your world a little bit because they're going to start and see your stuff. So that's cool. If it's um, a subscription, uh, if, you're, if you're email, then really you have to invite people to connect. So you have a page where people can register. Um, but at one point, really early on, we just used to register people for it. <laughs> then were the days before GDPR, before any of that. I know, yeah, yeah, but you can't really do that now, really. So, but what you can do is say, I've got this thing, would you like to do it? And then either send them a registration page where they can just type it all in. Or alternatively, what you can do is um, uh, so do you want, if you want to do it, I can register for you. But you've got to go for that double opt in, really, to be, to be sure. So then it says, are you sure you want to register for this? And yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. The, the, what you're looking for here with your email list is quality. It's not quantity. You're not Jeff Walker or um, Frank Kern, where you're one of these online marketers, and they literally need hundreds of thousands of people on their mailing list because that's how they sell. We're well, not that. We're trying to create a community around some content that drops into people's inbox, or in this case, into their email inbox or whatever it is. In, in in mail box message box or whatever, whatever on, on LinkedIn, is, yeah. whatever but it comes to you because you've said i want it so we don't want to just trick people into it or try and convince people they should be there when they're not you know that's kind of a big deal so subscribers linkedin does it for you or you do it with individuals one at a time okay so then i think there's only a couple of things that i really think that we need to focus on next is how would i create one how would i go about saying right i'm going to do this mike i'm getting a newsletter you've convinced me 
What am I supposed to do now? Where am I supposed to go? Um, well, um, you... LinkedIn seems like a good place. LinkedIn, yeah. You, if you go, so if you want to do this, so you go into as if you're going to post an on post, make a post on LinkedIn, and at the bottom there it says, um, "Oh, just so everyone knows, uh, my wife has just arrived home, and my dogs are going mad out there." To post, you know. I did wonder. I could hear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, okay. um, bless her. So, uh, so, so, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So you go and as if you're going to make a post, it says article at the bottom. You click on article brings an article up and it says at the top right hand part of the screen newsletter and you click on that and you can set your newsletter up if it's not there yet keep looking because it will arrive at some point i promise all right so that's how you set it up if you're going to go in the email route you just need to get some something to send one of these things out so your crm system might already have that if not you can look at something like mailchimp or constant contact which is what we used to use and you can get different formats and and they're pretty good things, actually. We might go back to constant contact. I'm very excited about it for the for the new bracer. But so once you've done that, you've got the mechanics of it sorted out. Really, that's that's a key thing. To be fair. Okay. All right. Fantastic. And then, I think the last thing I'm going to ask you before I sort of give a little cheeky summary would be, how am I supposed to use them? Like how how am I? You know, like we talk a lot about tools and how we use them okay. in specific ways for specific purposes. How am I supposed to use a newsletter? Okay, so the first thing to say before you do anything else is this, right? Keep your subscriber lists clean because if you don't do that, quite frankly, it won't be a lot of use to you. You know that everyone has an online reputation. Whether you like it or not, you have one. And that really online reputation dictates whether your emails will go to the people you want them to or not, or end up in junk or clutter. And you damage your online reputation by sending things to people that they don't want, basically, uh, or putting the wrong things in the subject line. Mm. If anyone seems, seems, has seen Peter's article on this, it's very detailed. There's a very detailed set of things you can and can't do. But one of them is you really can't send emails to people that don't want them. So... Even if someone subscribes and says, yeah, I want that, but then they choose not to open it too many times, that will begin to damage your online reputation. So every month when you get your feedback on who's opened and clicked through, the people that haven't, you need to keep a record of those. Mostly you can download the, the results into a spreadsheet and then just merge it with a big spreadsheet. It's not a big deal, really. But, but you can see if people aren't engaging. And then what you should do with them is sometimes we used to send them an email to say, we're going to take you off the list and let you tell us not to. If it's someone important, I'll ring them up and say, look, you know, you've not been reading it. Do you still want it? Because I, I can take you off. Or, but you kind of have to open it. Otherwise, it you know, kind of damages our reputation. And people are very good about it usually. Oh, I've been really busy. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. No, 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 keep me on, keep me on. I, I, I love it, but I'm just so busy at the moment. So, But I think you have to be very interactive about your subscriber list. Be very proactive is the word about keeping it clean. And if you do that, your reputation will stay high and your open rates and click-through rates will be very mm. good as well. You know, and you'll good. be able to use it to sort of see, like we mentioned earlier, yeah. what is interesting. You'll be able to yeah, tell. You, you asked me that question, didn't you? So let, let yeah. me answer that question. Thank you. Sorry about that. But I just needed to say that because without that, you're not really going to get anything at all, really. Mm. Um, so, um, so you'll get... Uh, as I said earlier, you can use it to understand what your target audience, your community is interested in. You can, by just by sending it out, it's doing its job. It will generate interactions. You will get people replying to it if it's on email. I'm not really sure how the LinkedIn one works. I guess they'll make comments on it, I would think, <clears throat> and like it so you'd see interactions that way. But you'll see, you will do that for you. You'll also see a, a common people who just read it a lot and you don't know who they are and you think well who who are they and i wouldn't see it necessarily on linkedin if it was just a regular post because people look at it but i don't know who they are who's looking at it but i do know now so people have registered for it and they they receive it and they like it and that then can you can they've self-selected in a way so you can think mm -hmm. well okay that's interesting i wonder if i could invite them to something or just ring them up or send them an email or a message or something so it's a self uh, selection tool as well many uses you can use it with the trick is though you've got to get your target audience sorted out so you must understand who this is for like jean luc was talking about earlier and the other thing is what are you going to talk about are you going to go for the article route the smorgasbord and if it's a smorgasbord what are your features going to be like the u magazine what's on page three 
what's the first thing you're going to put in the second the third the fourth the fifth the last Mm. Um, another one i don't think he does it anymore was really good by red kite was Mm. the, the name of the newsletter and it was excellent put together in kind of a very low key way. It wasn't very corporate, but it was just packed with stuff, and I couldn't wait for it to drop into my inbox so I could read it. It was one of those things that you kind of went, "Oh, I'll read that now. I'll open it now and have a yeah. look." Yeah, yeah, really good, and that's what you're looking for, really. Okay, all right, fantastic. So, in a second, Mike, I'm going to come to you and ask for your one final thing. But let me uh, just do a quick summary of today. So. Essentially, what we've spoken is as newsletters are coming back, they're coming back a little bit different, but they are coming back because social media is rampant and everything's noisy everywhere else. People want that focus. So it's great because it gives you those half of your quality interactions a year that you need to develop a relationship. It puts you in front of somebody else, that mere exposure effect, so that you they feel like they know you, they feel like they've got a relationship with you before you do it, which makes sales so much easier, so much delightfully easier. Um, it means that you can kind of potentially hit them in that pre-buying zone or the buying zone if you're a bit unluckier, um, which increases your chance of being used by someone and you get more data. You get more data that social media sort of stopped giving you because it is so anonymous. You get this person's opened these three things. Mm. This person's focus is on that. Every time I post about it, they open it. I'll send them that product, whatever it might be. You can have different formats. So you can have a feature, which is just one specific thing, or you can have a smorgasbord. um, where You have lots of different things and maybe your reflections at the end. And to get subscribers, depending on which platform you use, um, you sort of have to be a bit intentional about it on email, less so on LinkedIn. But whatever you do, however you get subscribers, make sure you keep that list clean. Because if you don't, it's going to damage your online reputation. Yeah. But the benefits that you get from that information is going to be a lot. Does that summarize it all up, Michael? It seems to do very well. And, and again, just to reiterate, you are creating a community. You're not one of the big online marketers. You want to sell stuff to people. You just want people who feel the same as you and are interested in what you're interested in to, to, to get access to your content and they want it. They're creating this little community. It doesn't matter on the size of your uh, subscribers list. matters is how interactive they are and, and really what you get from that. It's very important. Interestingly enough, since we've been talking, I've now got <clears throat> uh, 265. So that's another eight subscribers since the last Dude. time we looked at it. Doing well, Pretty doing cool. Well, anyway, okay. sorry about that. So, Mike, um, I've, do you want to do your final thing first? Let's do your final thing. What If someone's watching this and they're thinking newsletters, I'm interested, Mike. I'm thinking, hello, I want one. What's the first step? What's the first thing they should do? Easy peasy, this one. You'll love it. Yeah. Just subscribe to other people's newsletters. And I'm not saying you need to subscribe to mine because I haven't really got it panned down yet. But there's loads of newsletters. You can subscribe for a bit and then unsubscribe. But the idea is to immerse yourself into newsletter world. Kind of see what people are saying and how they're doing it and what, what they do. And you think, do you know what? I should really like that. I'd take that. Or, no, that doesn't work for me. I wouldn't have that in mind. So you're gradually using other people's newsletters to help you shape yours. And I think that's a really cool way to do that. For the next, you know, four to six weeks, eight weeks or something, just let let that happen. And then from there, you can begin to think about your community and what you're going to talk about and your format and the product that you'll use, et cetera, et cetera. So. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Mike. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Next week, Mike, I believe we're talking about share options, are we not? Yeah, we are. We have um, Martin Cooper who's a partner at RSM, a big, uh, big accountancy firm. He's going to come and talk to us about share option schemes because share option scheme, oh, and the difference between giving shares out and and the share option schemes and how much you should do and when you should do it, and et cetera, and why you should do it. But for me personally, whether you're going to build and sell your business or whether you're going to build and have an MBO at the end of it or whether you just want to pay out some kind of dividend or bonus based upon the shares that people have got it's a great way to tie people in and in this current market my goodness that's a good thing to do so martin's going to come and really talk about that it's live so you he i don't know anything about this subject so you need to be on it if you're interested in asking questions that's and then the he'll no don't answer them for us same time next week uh 12 30 on a thursday you know we're always here so i would like to thank all of you for watching and your comments uh really appreciate them michael Thank you so much. You've been buzzy. You've 
You've given me like so gal. Thank you, Sluggo, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna awesome. have a nap now. It was a bloody good laugh as well, really. Mm. Gonna go and have a bite to lunch. But no, thank you very much for tuning in. It was great. And for your comments as well, as always. So and we'll see you next week.